Hey guys, it's Miss Sherlyn back again with the Wayne County Public Library. So this is our last final Thanksgiving story time and tomorrow's Thanksgiving. So can you have any, well, do you have any idea what that means? Yep, we're going to eat a lot because I'm super excited to eat a lot. Um, turkey, you might eat ham, you might eat some pie, you might eat corn, green beans, potatoes. There's all kinds of stuff. So to get started today with our Thanksgiving story time, we have a, can you tell me what that is? We went over these the past couple of times. And everybody's probably tired of seeing them. It's a pumpkin, good job. And then we have the little ship that sailed from England. The Mayflower, good job. And we have a piece of, what is that? Pie, good job, probably pumpkin pie, if not for sure, maybe. Then we have corn, good job. And we have my little friend, the pilgrim. Good job. And then we have our good friend, Mr. Turkey. And my other good friend, the Indian. So today is, well, tomorrow, but tomorrow is all about good friends. So the pilgrims needed help. The Indians decided to help them. They came together and became best friends. And they had this huge feast of turkeys, ham, potatoes, corn, shellfish which we don't do unless if you do that might be different <laughs> but so they came together and celebrated for three long days this we're only doing this for one day i mean you might have family coming in i don't know but it, it's not going to last for very long it's usually just one day that's how my family has always done it your family may do it differently and this year may be a little bit different and that's okay so the first story that we're going to read about our good friends and celebrating thanksgiving and all the fun that we can have it's Thanksgiving Graces, and the words are written by Mark Kimball Moten, and the pictures are illustrated by David Wenzel. So he drew the pictures. And it is published by Ideas Children's Books, and it's published in Nashville, Tennessee, which is pretty close to home. The turkey's in the oven and the dinner table is set. The house feels warm and cozy, though no guests have come by yet. I'm helping mom and grandma in the kitchen with the pies when dad bursts through the door and calls out, Look who's here! Surprise! Charlie! Mom and Graham exclaim, How wonderful! Come in! You'll stay for dinner, won't you? Grandma asks him with a grin. Charlie tips his hat and says, I will, on one condition. You'll let me wash these pots and pans and tidy up the kitchen. If you insist, my grandma laughs, they're yours, my mom agrees. So dad and I set one more place as mom starts on the peas. I'm home, the front door opens. It's my older brother, Jim. He's just arrived from college and he's brought a friend with him. Amid our gales of greetings, Grandpa finds another chair. My sister bends to hug me and then ruffles up my hair. <clears throat> Jim tastes the gravy. Yum, he says, and then he lifts another lid and sticks a finger into taste just like a little kid. My mother laughs, then asks if he will slice up some tomatoes <clears throat> as Dad adds milk and butter to his special mashed potatoes. Outside, a horn is beeping. To the window, we all run to see my aunt from out of town and her adopted son. Looks like we'll need a few more chairs, says Grandpa with a wink. And maybe one more table is in order, come to think. My aunt has brought fresh flowers. Grandma finds a pretty vase as Dad and Grandpa rearrange the room to make more space. The kitchen's growing smaller by the minute, louder too, with everybody wishing Happy Thanksgiving to you. The coffee pot is perking. Grandma Lee gives the beans a stir. The teapot whistles joyfully beside the mixer's whir. The telephone begins to ring. It's Bonnie, calls my brother. She wants to know if she can bring her cousin and her mother. Of course, my mom and dad reply. 
We'd love to have them here. We haven't seen the three of them since sometime late last year. Our table grows and grows and grows as more and more stop by. <clears throat> I peer around at everyone and catch my grandma's eye. What's wrong, she asks me kindly as she sets me on her knee. I ask her, will there be enough? She smiles, of course, you'll see. There's stuffing, mashed potatoes, turnips, gravy, rolls and beans, yams as sweet as candy, and a salad of mixed greens. Then Grandpa brings the turkey in, the fragrance fills the air. We all hold hands around the room and bow our heads in, our silent blessing over the food. I crack an eye and peek at all our loved ones gathered here, our family, friends, old and new, whom we hold near and dear. I marvel at all the grace my family shows to everyone. It's something to be proud after all is said and done. Just like that first Thanksgiving when the native people came to help the pilgrims with their gifts of corn and wild game. And all at once I understand what my grandma meant. The reason why we gather for this annual event. We're thanking for all the gifts that we get and for food and health and happiness and being safe and warm firesides with our family. And when we open up our hearts and share these gifts with grace, the world we live in it suddenly becomes a better place. So come, the more the merrier of this, I have no doubt that sharing what we have is what Thanksgiving is all about. So, and I hope you like that story. And we have our next one, and me and Heather grew up with these books. <laughs> the next one we did too. So it's super fun to see these and read them to you. Um, it's Franklin's Thanksgiving. It is written by Paulette Burgess, and the pictures are illustrated by Brenda Clark, and it is published by Scholastic Books, and you will get to meet our friend Franklin. Franklin liked everything about Thanksgiving. He liked eating pumpkin fly pie and cranberry jelly. He liked making cornucopias and corn husk dolls. But most of all, he liked having his grandma and grandpa come for dinner. It was a family tradition and Franklin could hardly wait. A week before Thanksgiving, a postcard arrived from Franklin's grandparents. Oh dear, sighed Franklin's grandmother, or mother. Grandma and grandpa can't make it back to the holiday. But they have you, cried Franklin. They're always here for Thanksgiving. Franklin's mother gave him a hug. There will still be just the four of us, she said. It won't be the same, Franklin grumbled. Over the next few days, Franklin was so busy that he didn't have much time to think about Grandma and Grandpa. He helped his mother pick apples and make applesauce. He helped his father dig up vegetables and store them in the cellar. Franklin and Bear helped Harriet and Beatrice pick berries and gather nuts. In the gardens and the orchards, forests and fields, everyone was bringing in the harvest. Franklin counted all the jars of jam and preserves. I think this year will be the most bountiful ever, announced his father. We could feed the whole town. I just wish we could feed Grandma and Grandpa, sighed Franklin. His mother agreed. We'll miss having company, she said. At school, Franklin's class made a harvest quilt and learned how the early settlers celebrated Thanksgiving. What are you doing for Thanksgiving, Mr. Owl? asked Franklin. Uh, I'll have dinner with my mother, he replied. Our relatives can't visit this year. Ours neither, said Franklin. Then he had an idea. He invited Mr. Owl and his mother for dinner. It's all right with my parents, Franklin explained. They want company. Well, thank you, Franklin, said Mr. Owl. We'll be delighted to come. Franklin smiled. This would be a wonderful surprise for his parents. At home, Franklin's mother looked at the berry pies cooling on the windowsill. She had an idea. She walked over to Bear's house and invited the whole family for Thanksgiving. It will be a wonderful surprise for everyone, she explained. I think they're going to have a lot of people. In the garden, Franklin's father waved to Mr. Mole. Are you going to your sisters for Thanksgiving, he asked. Not this year, replied Mr. Mole. With my broken ankle, I can't go far. 
Franklin's father had an idea. He invited Mr. Mole for dinner. It will be a wonderful surprise for everyone, he explained. <coughs> After school, Franklin went home with Moose. That's when he had another idea. It was the Moose's family's first Thanksgiving in Woodland, and Franklin invited them for dinner. It's all right with my parents, he explained. They want company. We'd be delighted, replied Miss Moose. Franklin smiled. His surprise was getting bigger and bigger. On Thanksgiving morning, Franklin got up early to help with dinner. He stirred soup and he shook the corn. Then he set the table for nine. Franklin's father counted the place settings. He shook his head and reset the table for five. Franklin's mother looked at the table. She was puzzled, but she added three more place settings. And everyone took turns peeking out the window, watching for the surprise guests. Mr. Allen and his mother were the first to arrive. Surprise! Franklin shouted to his parents. This is a surprise, they exclaimed. Then Franklin saw the Bear family and Mr. Mole. Now everyone was surprised. All the guests crowded inside, holding platters and bowls heaped high with food. Franklin and his parents laughed and tried to explain what had happened. Well, I'm sure we'll have plenty to eat, declared Franklin's mother. We just don't have plenty of room. Franklin knew they had a big problem. The Moose family hadn't arrived yet. Franklin looked around. There wasn't one bit of room inside, but outside, suddenly Franklin knew what to do. Moose and his family arrived as all the others came out the door. Everyone carried food and dishes, tables and chairs. What's going on? asked Moose. We're eating our Thanksgiving dinner in the field, answered Bear. Just like the early settlers, said Franklin. It was a wonderful afternoon. Everyone ate lots of good food and everyone said how thankful they were for good friends and family. Franklin was very thankful for three helpings of pumpkin fly pie. I'm eating Grandma and Grandpa's chair, he explained. Soon the sun was setting and it was time to go home. This was a wonderful day, said Franklin's mother. Franklin agreed. Let's do it again next year, he said. Everyone laughed and cheered. Grandma and Grandpa phoned later that night and Franklin told them all about the new Thanksgiving tradition. They promised that next year they wouldn't miss it for anything. Franklin smiled. He might not have got to get three helpings of pumpkin fly pie next year, but he knew he'd still be very thankful. That end, I hope you like that story. Our next story is the Berenson Bears Thanksgiving. So we grew up with this one too, and it's just cute and funny. But it is written by Stan and Jay Berenstain, and they also drew the pictures, and it is published by Scholastic. It's round the next bend down a sunny dirt road. Just ask the next squirrel, caterpillar, or toad. For the treehouse home of the bear family, where Ma, Pa, and the cubs are cozy and warm in their split level tree. Just at the moment, inside their quaint little home, they're reading the harvest honeycomb. Honeycomb dribble, honeycomb drip. What lies ahead? A handsome stranger, money, a trip? Grizzle growl, grizzly grim, warn us of any danger to come. Then mama blew hard, loose flower flew. Who caught the flower? Papa, that's who. But mama and papa both had turned white from pa the flower, mama from fright. The sign on the pan stuck to the honey was no handsome stranger, no trip, no money. But a bone chilling warning of danger ahead, the frightening footprint of a giant, a great giant's thread. Big paw, breathed Ma. Good grief, and alas, the Thanksgiving legend is coming to pass. Legend? asked Sister. What legend is that? It says when the bears of bear country grow greedy and big and fail to share nature's great bounty, that monster of monsters, Big Paw, will come and gobble up bear country county by county. Nonsense, marked Papa. Nonsense and stuff. Nonsensical piffle, pure bear country gruff. But Papa Bear could 
couldn't have been more wrong. The Thanksgiving legend was coming on strong, not more than 10 or 12 miles away at that very moment of that very day. In a dark, murky forest, the ground was shaking. From crane fly to croc, swamp creatures were quaking. Something was coming. The creatures were frantic. Something enormous, something gigantic. It was Big Paul, of course. He was bigger by far than Paul Bunyan's horse, with shoulders like boulders, ditto to his knees, with paws big as dumpsters and arms thick as trees. Out of the forest he came and he went, each footfall leaving a monster-sized dent. But Papa just scoffed and puffed out his chest. Just forget about the monsters and all the rest, because, my dears, I beg to suggest, when it comes to holidays, your Papa knows best. I'm a bear for holidays. I like them all, whether in winter, spring, summer, or fall. And your pa has perfect holiday habits. On Easter, I always make way for rabbits and say a small poem for spring and rebirth. On Earth Day, of course, I cherish the earth. On Christmas Day, I think of others, mothers, fathers, sisters, brothers. On Arbor Day, I talk to the trees. Hello, tree. But Thanksgiving is the best holiday, if you please. The one that, for me, is really the winner. Why? Thanksgiving dinner. Yes, it was almost time for the bears' Thanksgiving, the day they gave thanks for their, th their standard of living. When what a standard it was, from hollow to hill, from Glenwich to glade, the bears of bear country had it made. Except for the legend, the legend that said, if the bears of bear county were selfish and greedy and insufficiently kind to the needy, giving them no more than a tail or a wing, then Big Paul would come and do his thing. We'll have pickles and olives, marshmallows, yams, two kinds of pie, jellies and jams, seven grain bread, turkey of course, also radishes, both red and horse, corn on the cob, dripping with butter, so yummily yummy, so utterly utter. So, as you can see in Papa Bear's case, all Thanksgiving meant was feeding his face. And I almost forgot, no ifs, ands, or buts, my favorite treat, we know, Papa, mixed nuts. So, they went to a place that they knew only where the mixed nut forest, where the mixed nut forest trees grew. As the cubs picked almonds and walnuts, pistachios too, which Papa Bear claimed as his Thanksgiving due, the entire forest started to lurch. The cubs fell like stones from their top lofty perch. But they landed not with a bone jarring bump, they landed instead with a comfortable whomp. For you see, the cubs had been caught in midair in the dumpster sized paw of a monster sized bear. It was Big Paw, of course, the monster had come. Talk about scared, and the, the normally talkative cubs were struck quiet and dumb. Suffice to say, Something surprising happened that day. With a bit of a smile and nary a sound, he gently placed them down on the ground. What a shock! What a surprise! For despite his manner and his imposing size, Big Paul was nice, gentle, and shy, a friendly, helpful sort of guy. Those cubs knew what they had to do, tell that only part of the legend was true. Though he was powerful, fearsome, and tall, the monster called Big Paul was no monster at all. It was important news, so they hurried off, leaving Big Paul looking a little worried. Little cubs, little cubs, you forgot your mixed nuts. This certainly was true, no ifs, ands, or buts. So when the cubs told Paul their Big Paul tale, his eyes opened wide, his face grew pale. Paul didn't hear the positive part. All he heard was Big Paul, the name stuck terror in Papa Bear's heart. Just hold on, said Mama. Whether or not the legend is true, we must welcome the stranger. It is the right thing to do. But, 
ignoring the news that Big Paul was nice and paying no heed to Mama's advice, Papa Bear called up the Bear National Guard. They would deal with the stranger. They would deal with him hard. <sighs> Meanwhile, Big Paul had climbed to the high mountain ledge. He stretched and he yawned as he looked over the edge. As Big Paul's yawns rolled into the valley through a mountain pass known as Echo Valley, they grew from a rumble, from an enormous roar, and confirmed the bear's fears about the Thanksgiving monster of legend and lore. Mama's protest fell on deaf ears. The bears of Bear County gave in to their fears. Mama's advice notwithstanding, they put the cart of fear before the horse of understanding. To arms, cried Papa. There's no time to fuss. We've got to get him before he gets us. <clears throat> Swords were unsheathed, bulges were blown. They were no longer bears with minds of their own. They were no longer Jack and Jill, Betty and Bob. The bears had become a big, dangerous mob. With the false courage of numbers to the mountain they went, with an arsenal of weapons and deadly intent. While up on the mountain, the cause of the flap was settling down for a bit of a nap. When he heard a strange sound, it was still far away and not very loud. Of course, what it was was the roar of a crowd. Now, Big Paul was certainly no mental wizard, but he was getting a feeling deep down in his gizzard that trouble was coming, so he scratched his head and started his fuzzy old noodle a humming, and using his powerful arms and shoulders, he built a tower, a tower of boulders. If those bears were to charge out of the valley, they'd be just like pins in a bowling alley. But those bears kept on coming faster and faster. There was simply no way to avoid such a disaster. <clears throat> but then, at the very last instant before the rocks fell, there came through the den a cub's high-pitched yell. Wait! It was Sister. Wait! Sister cried. The rock tower teetered and it started to slide. Brother and Sister, small and defiant, had positioned themselves in defense of the giant. But, Brother and Sister, we in terrible danger, and there was no one to help them except for the giant. With the bears looking on in amazement and shock, Big Paw held back the tower of rock, and with the great strength of his mighty right arm, he protected his small brother and sister from harm. Big Paw's our friend, and he's very nice. He saved us once, and now he's rescued us twice. Weapons and hats filled the air, plus thankful shouts from every bear. There was joy in the valley on that fateful day. The bears welcomed the stranger. Yes, they had a debt to repay. But it was more than that. At Thanksgiving dinner the very next day, host Papa Bear had this to say. Friends, we are thankful that we've learned to share our bounty with our fellow bear. Um, excuse me, please, if you don't mind. There is, here is something that you left behind. Look, Papa, your favorite treat, mixed nuts. Yes, friends, it was quite a Thanksgiving. No ifs, ands, or buts. The end. And I hope you like that story. That's a good story. Our next little thing we're going to go over is our Thanksgiving story we did last week. So, the Thanksgiving story last week that we did is written by Russell Reese, so he wrote the words to this story, and it is illustrated by Bob Legionnaire, so he drew the pictures on our little felt pieces I'm going to show you. A long time ago, a small ship called the Mayflower came to America. On this ship were people called pilgrims. So we have a boy pilgrim, and we have a girl pilgrim. They came to America in search of a place to live, work, and worship as they pleased. It took the pilgrims a long time to sail across the ocean. Finally, they arrived in America at a place called Plymouth. It was winter and very cold when they built their new homes. Their food was almost gone. Many pilgrims passed that winter in the new land because of the harsh weather and because there was not enough food. One day in spring, an Indian came to the pilgrim's little village. The pilgrims were surprised by the Indian, but they welcomed him. Soon the pilgrims made friends with more Indians who lived near Plymouth. The Indians helped the pilgrims by showing them how to hunt and fish for food. The pilgrims learned from an Indian named Squanto on how to plant corn, pumpkins, and beans. Squanto taught the pilgrims how to grow corn by putting a fish 
in a hole with seeds. The fish fertilized the soil to help the corn grow. The pilgrims waited all summer for the seeds that they had planted to grow. The sun shone on the plants and the rain came and watered them. By the end of the summer, the plants were even bigger and ready to be harvested. The pilgrims gathered and stored the food for enough, well, they had enough food to last them for a long time, but they stored and gathered the foods from the plants. So everyone was happy. The pilgrims decided to have a big feast to give thanks for their homes, families, friends, and for the wonderful harvest that they had. The pilgrims were thankful to have the Indians as friends, so they invited them to share in the feast with them. When the day of the feast arrived, the pilgrims set up a huge table and covered it with all kinds of foods, fruits, vegetables, pies, and other tasty food. Many Indians came, bringing with them wild turkey and deer that they had hunted with bows and arrows. For three long days, the Indians and pilgrims feasted and played games. Everyone sat down to eat, but before they began, they bowed their head and gave thanks for their many blessings that they had. That is why on Thanksgiving Day, we should do like the pilgrims and remember to give thanks for all of the good things that we have. So, we did that last week, and you get to hear it again. That way, the story will mean something to you when you eat and settle down with your family or friends this Thanksgiving. So our next story we have is Thanksgiving for Emily, and it is our last story. Then we get to show you what you get in your prize back this week. This story is written by Teresa Johnston. So she wrote the words, and the pictures are illustrated or drawn by Vanessa Brantley Newton, and it is published by Cartwheel Books, an imprint on Scholastic. And there's Emily and her dog. Emily Ann just had to say she was not very thankful for on Thanksgiving Day. Her brother was mean. Her sister, a bore. And with Grandpa in town, she had to sleep on the floor. There was food to be cooked and chores to be done. With everyone busy, there was no time for fun. So Emily Ann, feeling alone and quite sad, chose not to be thankful and instead be a bit bad. So she snuck into the kitchen past mashed potatoes and pie, wiggly cranberry jelly and the rolls piled up high. She ducked by the table to play a funny trick. She reached for the turkey to hide it real quick. But her mom, who was cooking, saw her reach for the plate. Wow, what a big helper! Oh, Emily Ann, you are so great at helping. Her mom kissed her cheek and sent her straight through the door into the dining room with the shiny wood floor. On the big dinner table where the placemats she'd made, turkeys with top hats voted best work in her grade. And there in that moment, Emily Ann saw the truth. Her family had come together from Uncle Mark to little Ruth. Cousins Austin and Julie, even great grandma was there cuddling Henry with his soft curly hair. And she was a piece of it from her top to her toes. They really didn't matter all her Thanksgiving woes. By the time she sat down on Thanksgiving Day, I'm thankful for family was all she could say. Happy Thanksgiving. I hope you like that book. Sometimes we can get upset at family, but they're still your family. So hopefully you'll have a really good happy Thanksgiving. And I'm going to show you what we're going to get in our craft packet this week. 
you have gobble till you wobble, that little turkey you can color. And then we have the first Thanksgiving, and you're going to cut, well first you're going to color it. Then you're going to cut and then glue them in whatever order you think they first came in. Then we have a cut and paste after you color, little thing. You have to match up the shapes at the bottom with the shapes in the top. Then we have the turkey trot, and these turkeys are hungry. Trace each turkey's path to the feast, and you can color it. Then for our craft, we have two crafts this week. We have our turkey that you're going to do. It's take your clothespin and glue on, or they might be sticky, the stick on eyeballs. If you don't want to do this, just draw them on. Then you glue on the beak and the gobbler. Then you take your coffee filter and color any color you like, or go decorate it like the one above. Have fun making your decorated turkey. It's a cute little turkey. Then we have Thanksgiving time. Put an X on each object that is different in the row. Then we have this cute little hedgehog. And you go outside, you pick up leaves, like a few of them. You glue or tape them onto your little hedgehog. And it just makes a colorful, cute little activity. And here is your hedgehog, a giraffe. Then we have my turkey hid, and you're going to draw where your turkey would hide if you were a turkey or if you were catching a turkey. Wherever it would just hide. Then we have gobble gobble, little turkey. And each of these turkey has a twin. You have to find the one that looks just like it, and you can color it. And we have sharing gratitude. So with this, it tells you a little bit about writing a card. You want to write it to somebody like in your family, grandma, grandpa, maybe somebody you're not seeing this year, that'll be okay. It's got a cute little picture of an animal in it, some stickers on the back that look like postcards. You just put it together, write your little letter, and send it. And then you'll get these cute little things in there. This one says, you are a good friend, Heather. <laughs> this one, I mean, you, there's a whole bunch of them in there, the packets that we had. It just, you give to somebody that you think was a good friend, somebody that you want to have a picnic with, maybe mom, dad, brother, sister, somebody that you want to watch a movie with, mom, dad, brother, sister, grandma, grandpa, aunt, uncle, maybe your friend, whoever you want to do goes with. It was just something cute that we had that we thought you all would enjoy. And this little bag has your clothespin, the eyeballs, the beak, the little gobbler that the turkey has, and the coffee filter. So I hope you all enjoy this story time, and be sure to tune in next week because next week is Christmas. So thank you so much.